Welcome to Traders Corner. As always, I'm joined by Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi, Julia. Garth, let's start off uh, with a general look at the markets this evening because they are rather perplexing. Um, so, what does the, what is the top forty telling you at this point in time? Yeah, I'm going to just I'm going to really keep it local today and look at uh, all local charts. We we often look at the overseas markets as sure. a bigger picture, but I'm going to just rather keep it local today. And I want to start with a look at the top forty index and just to illustrate what's going on there because it is rather interesting. Uh, Certainly over the last couple of days, it's been interesting. In fact, it's been pretty interesting since the outcome of the Brexit vote. Um, what you can see on the chart here now is a, is a chart of the top 40 spot index going back to March of this year. Okay. And you can see, by and large, the market's just been going along sideways, chopping up and down. Um, but there's quite a big uh, support area here at about 45,000 on the top 40 spot index. You can see that we broke a little bit below that after the Brexit vote. Um, that happened last week, Monday, that we saw that spike to the downside. And then um, Tuesday it started to rally and we had a fairly strong week last week. But what's notable here is that the market is now pushing up against the underside of the 50-day moving average over here. You can see that 50-day moving average is the red line at the top there. The one below that is the 200-day moving okay. average. What's quite interesting here is that those two moving averages are moving along more, more or less parallel at the moment, which is actually quite strange to see. Um, it, it really tells a story of a sideways market because in order for, for both of these uh, moving averages to be basically tracking sideways and be moving parallel like they are, it tells you that the market has to have been going generally sideways mm. for quite a long time to get into that sort of situation. Because obviously remember that these moving averages do look backwards and they, yes. they, they, they look quite a long way backwards in the case of the 200-day moving average. Um, but what, what's notable for me here is have a look at the, the, the daily candlestick patterns on the top 40 index here. And notice how they've all, certainly over the last three trading days, there have been these long tails, or some, sometimes we call those the wicks of the candles, mm -hmm. these long wicks to the upside. And they all seem to stop more or less at the underside of the 50-day moving average over there. And I don't have it drawn onto this chart, but that level also corresponds with a 61.8% Fibonacci retracement of this recent drop. So if you mm -hmm. take the drop from, what is that, around about the 21st or 22nd, I think, of of uh, June, down all the way into that drop after the Brexit vote. Now, what it means is that the market's now rallied up and mm. it's rallied 61.8% of that recent drop. Yeah. And it appears as if it is running into resistance at that area. So you've got kind of multiple resistance points here. You've got the underside of the 50-day moving average and you've got the 61.8% retracement there. So the fact that these uh, candlesticks are making long tails to the upside on a day-to-day -day basis is quite interesting. And it is telling you that there's selling pressure there. And that suggests to me that the possibility that we could possibly see another move to the downside mm. here. And if it breaks below the 200-day moving average, would that be quite technically negative? Look, if, it's, if it broke below the 200-day moving average and it stayed below there, then that could be quite technically negative. Um, you can see it did go below the 200-day moving average after the Brexit vote, but then it's quickly regained mm. that again. So at this stage, uh, we are trading above the 200-day moving average still, but only just. I think if it starts to turn lower and actually starts to establish itself below both the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average, that is technically a bit more bearish. Mm. But at this, at this stage, really, I just want to point out the fact that there has been quite a lot of selling pressure evident at the underneath of, the, of that 50-day moving average there. Guys, before we talk about this week's theme, which is gold stocks, mm. uh, I know that you want to refresh last week's show, which was um, the, I suppose, the, the mechanics of the option structure that you've um, put on for the portfolio. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to go into the, the finer details of it. Uh, viewers who missed that show can always catch up online, uh, either on the Business Day TV website or on, on traderscorner.co.za and go and have a look at the video files from last week's show, uh, where you can actually see how I constructed this put spread option structure. Uh, but suffice to say, this is the summary of the payoff of how the thing works. Um, what it basically means is that we, we've got the levels of the top 40 index along the bottom axis over here. And on the left-hand side, we've got above the line, we've got profit, and below the line, we've got a loss. And uh, the, the payoff is illustrated by this bright yellow line over here. Now, you can see that anything above 45,000 on the top 40 index, we basically paid away a premium of 891 Rand. And that premium is, is gone. It's almost mm -hmm. like an insurance premium, if you like. Okay. We've paid it, we've lost it, it's, we don't see that again. However, if the market begins to fall below 45,000, 
then the structure will start to make money. And it makes good money down at uh, about 41,500. If, if the top 40 were to go into that level or into that area by the September futures closeout, then we stand to make about 34,000 Rand off of this trade. So you can see that the risk to reward ratio here is very favorable mm -hmm. in the sense that we pay 891 Rand. We can make up to 34,000 Rand in a best case scenario for this. And what I like about that is it really just gives us participation on the downside without us having to be naked short the market. Um, I do still think, I mean, we, we go and have a look at the payoff now on, on this diagram. Um, it's the same top 40 yes. chart as before, mm -hmm. but basically we've just now taken the options payoff diagram and turned it on its side to illustrate where we would make money on the, uh, on the chart. And you can see quite clearly this 45,000 area on the top 40 chart is quite a significant support level. If we were to start breaking down below that area convincingly, well, then we want to be able to participate out of that weakness. But I don't want to be naked short in mm -hmm. this market either. Um, and doing this with an option structure is really nice because it, it means that we've effectively locked in our loss look, up until 51,000. We don't all we would lose is our premium that we've paid away. That's the 891 Rand that I referred to. And anything below 45,000, then we start to make money. So you can see if the market does fall below this 45,000 area, we're going to be very nicely positioned to yeah. make good profits out of a falling market in this case. Just maybe one last comment before we start talking about the gold stocks. It seems as if this time around you gave yourself maybe longer wings on either side yeah. of, the, of the structure because the last time... You, um, you did it for the portfolio. Unfortunately, the market rallied mm. to a point into the danger zone. Yeah. Uh, and, and then you had to do a lot of careful footwork around yes, that. Yes, yes. That's right. I have, uh, look, the, the pricing of the options were also quite favorable in this sense, in that the, the volatility, but I also don't want to get too complicated here, but the volatility skew was shifted such that I could earn more premium by selling the out the money puts, which, I, which worked very nicely to our, in our favor in mm. this case. Okay. So, yes, the wings are quite wide. We've got. 51,000 uh, at the upper end there where you can see our danger zone begins to bite. And then all the way down here at 35,500 is where the other danger zone mm. comes to bite us. Um, so I like this structure. I think it's very, very nicely positioned for the third quarter now. And if we do see any weakness going out into September, this uh, structure is very, very well positioned yeah. for that. And presumably, if there's any weakness in the general market, there might be strength in the gold sector, which yeah. is what we've seen recently. Um, it's not an... Uh, you have traded it before. Mm -hmm. um, um, is it the only sector that's actually showing any sort of tradability at the moment? Well, yeah. I mean, when I look at the broader markets, it's very difficult in, in the sense that we've got the, the major sectors, the um, industrials, the financials, the resources are all relatively choppy at the moment. There's not a huge amount of, you know, trend to work with. It's, it's, it's a, very, a lot of noise across all the sectors, mm. really. The gold sector of the market is the one area that is the, sh the shining light at the moment, where there is actually quite a lot of trend, and, and there have been very powerful breakouts that we've seen in the last couple of days. So I'm going to hone in on, on these and point these out. And I'm not doing a trade this week, but I, I, I would say that all of these charts that I'm going to look at here in the gold sector um, are potentially opportunities to buy on a new dip. Okay. And so that's possibly something we might be looking out for in the week ahead. Okay, so you're starting off with the, the biggest being Anglo Gold Ashanti. Yeah, Anglo Gold Ashanti is the, is the biggest uh, gold miner listed on the JSE. And what's evident here is that it's been trading in this upward sloping channel ever since March. Uh, and it was moving higher before that as well. But here you've got quite, quite a neat channel. And what's happened now over the last couple of days is that the market is actually, or the stock rather, has broken out to the upside above the top of that channel. That big gap over there that I'm circling with my mouse cursor. That happened when the Brexit uh, result came out and we woke up on the Friday morning and mm. the gold price was $75 an ounce higher than it was the day before. And all these gold shares suddenly rocketed higher. And those gaps you'll see on a number of these charts, there are these big gaps that have not been filled. Mm. And um, those are almost like breakaway gaps. Now we're seeing the, the prices continuing to move higher. So in the case of Anglo Gold, that breakout to the top end of that channel actually targets 310 Rand per share as a first target. So a good looking chart, a bullish chart, and I think a buy the dips approach can still be adopted here. But presumably, so you would want to wait, you would, um, to, in order to participate, you would wait for a bit of a retracement. I think I would. Be, I, I'd be loath to just chase it now. 
Um, I'm, I'm never keen to, to chase the bus, as it were. Uh, I, I look, ideally, we probably should have gotten on board these, these stocks before the breakout happened, but it's always easy in hindsight. I think once you've got that bullish break like we have now, then what you typically look for is the first sort of pullback to maybe retest the breakout area and then look at it, yeah. an opportunity to buy from there. And what about some of the other gold shares, Scott? So this is gold fields now, and what's evident here is that the stock's been basically moving along in a sideways range since February, with the lower end at about 54 Rand per share and the upper end at about 70 Rand per share. Now you can see in the last few days it's broken out to the upper end of that range, which is a very bullish mm. breakout, and it puts this share at a multi-year high now on this breakout, which is, which is a, a very bullish, bullish setup. Um, that breakout, you take the height of that channel and you project that distance upwards to get your uh, projected target. And that, in, in this case, it gives us a target of 84 Rand per share for gold fields based on that technical setup. That, th that would be a minimum target, and you could potentially expect mm -hmm. it to still go higher. In this case, I would look at any retracement down towards 70 Rand as an opportunity to possibly look to buy here. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, is it the same case for the, the, so the miners? Okay, maybe um, Sabani Gold, not so much, but Harmony and DRD Gold? Yeah, so, so Harmony Gold, here's the chart over here. Um, similar to what we've seen with the others, it's been moving along sideways since March, really. And you can see there's a little bit of a sort of a triangular type of structure evident here. Um, yesterday's break above 56 Rand on, uh, on Harmony Gold was a bullish breakout, and you can see that break there. And that breakout potentially points to a target of 72 Rand. Hmm. So, look, this one has been a little bit of a laggard when compared to the other gold miners. But not, notwithstanding that, this chart structure is still pretty bullish in yeah. my eyes. Possibly because the Rand hasn't been as weak, and that yeah. um, does affect Harmony. Sure. And I uh, imagine DRD Gold as well. Yeah, DRD Gold has, has also made a nice powerful break in the last few days. Um, there you can see uh, it's a little bit like an ascending triangle type of structure. But basically, the move above 8 Rand 50, which is that flat horizontal line over there, uh, that's a bullish breakout, and that break targets a move up to 10 Rand as a minimum target. So again, I think if this stock was to retrace towards the breakout area at about 8 Rand 50, it should find some support around there, and that would potentially be an area to look to buy some. And then just to round up the gold a clutch. Um, what about Sabanya? Yeah, Sabanya's is uh, also, it's, it's made a nice bullish break. Not bullish in the same respect as all the others that are now pushing to, to new highs, but nevertheless still bullish. Um, Sabanya has been consolidating in this downward sloping channel mm. over the last four months or so. Um, again, you can see a big gap up there following the Brexit vote, and the stock has now broken out to the upper end of that channel, and it's also broken out above its 50-day moving average. So that is quite a bullish break. And in this case, I'd look for a move up to those highs of February, March, and April, um, which is at about 60 Rand per share. Okay. And I think that's where this one can go. Garth, and to wrap up, um, no change, I imagine, to the portfolio. No, so the only thing we've got in our portfolio right now still is this option structure, which runs out to September. So the por portfolio is identical to last week. We've got and, uh, sorry, 268,000 <laughs> Rand in our portfolio, um, and we're, we're ready to put some money to work. It's nice to know that we do have that downside protection in place. Yeah. And then to end off, you've got a couple of courses, and also it's the MoneyWeb Expo this weekend. Yes, that's right. Um, I'm going to be presenting at the MoneyWeb, um, the Money Expo, which is at the Santon Convention Center this week, uh, Friday and Saturday. I'll actually be hosting a, um, a talk on trading on the Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. So anyone that would like to come down and pay us a visit and say hi, um, I'll be there as well as a number of other market uh, contributors. Manning your stall. There we go, manning <laughs> my stall. And, um, and then, yeah, courses. Uh, I've got two courses coming up at the end of July, uh, Understanding CFD's course on the 21st of July and a high probability trading course on the 23rd of July. So anybody that would like to attend either of these, please email me, garth at traderscorner.co.za, and I'll send you all the details. Mm. Okay, great, Garth. Well, good luck this weekend. Uh, that's where we leave it. Garth McKenzie is, of course, founder and editor of Traders Corner. <laughs>